So, baby, have you ever been in a boat? No, please. It's your first time. My first time. Wow. My marriage is taking me everywhere I want. <laughs> So how are you guys? Uh, I'm here with Yamakoti, uh, Kiwabantu, you know. Uh, we are here in Cape Town waterfront and we want to go to Robin Island for the first time. So we are still deciding. Uh, it's either we, we take a boat or maybe we fly, we take a helicopter. So now we are going to Robin Island offices here uh, in waterfront. Don't mind our English. It's not our mother. You know, you, you must know that it's not our mother. So, you guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. Please make sure you subscribe. We really need you here because we are going to show you a lot of stuff. So, we're still deciding whether we take a boat or we take a helicopter to Robert Island. So, just wait and see for the first time, guys. For the first time. Uh, for the first time we don't know helicopters this is helicopter sort of thing um, we're not taking helicopters ne? Mm, we're taking a uh, boat and we will where must we go now we don't know now and no entry so where's the entry now let's go this side so guys yeah we are now buying tickets um to robin allen's they say uh we have only 10 minutes left so guys we're going to show you everything we're going to show you south africa you know do you know south africa i know there's a lot of south africans here please do subscribe do support us here we're going to show you something uh, if you are not from South Africa, please subscribe. We are going to show you something. You know, we're going to Robin Island. If you know, all interesting places. Oh my gosh! Listen all to you. Nice places. Oh we're gonna God. visit all of them. The whole South Africa. Yo. We're gonna. Do you know her? She's my quarter band. In Zimbabwe, we call it. <laughs> Why? No, baby. It's still an introduction. You've got a lot of names, my love. Okay. My queen, my pumpkin, my chocolate, wow. my sweet banana. Okay. Can I melt? Everything you see now. <laughs> One thousand two hundred. <laughs> you see. So, all right. Can I melt? You can, baby. You can melt, baby. <laughs> So guys, yeah, uh, uh, we are about to. Oh, baby, carry me, please. Do you want me to carry you? Yes. Hey, baby, you're looking beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my. See our port now. And also, we really need our passport. You see these passports? Eh? Yeah? For you to get in the boat, if we are a foreigner, you need your passport. Uh, I mean your ID, just an ID. You see, guys, we're getting lost here. We're getting lost, guys. But I think. Pipi! Pipi! I'm leaving you behind, baby. <laughs> Why are you making noise now? Why are you making noise, baby? I'm used to that. You see, everyone is looking at you like, who is that one? Yes. Everyone is like, who is that one? What is he doing? Yo. It's like you are, it's like we are one million here. Jesus, me? Like, here yeah, we are, we are one million. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so baby Hello. have you ever been in a boat no please it's your first time my first time wow. my marriage is taking me everywhere i want you what my marriage wow you know marriage
knowledge is an achievement. I fly because of that. I now you know you are <laughs> People are looking at you. Yes, baby, I'm very shy. Why are you getting shy, baby? Okay. Mm. Okay, let me mm. cool then. Mm. <laughs> so guys, today we're going to show you Robin Island and we're going to take you there. We know you are not here, but we are going to take you there. And it's my first time, guys, to be in a boat. I don't know Imagine. My, my reaction, guys, seeing water. <laughs> Why if we drown, baby? So, guys, everyone is looking at us. Maybe we look different. We don't know. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, we're too, maybe we're too talkative or maybe we're too excited. But we are not only the person, we are the only one who's talking here. Is that English good? I don't know, but they must know it's not our mother's language, please. Yeah, it's not our mother's language. Raised talking show We are raised in, in the village where we are talking our language. So we're just trying our best here. Yeah, please appreciate that. But we promise you, in the next 30 years, we will be speaking fluently. <laughs> 30 years. Yeah. Can you read us? So guys, yeah, we are about to, this is our port, you see guys, this is our port and uh, we are about to right now and uh, it seems like everyone is ready man everyone is ready and you we can see that you're also ready to see Robin Island you see so guys yeah we are ready oh I forgot to tell you guys you see this t-shirt <laughs> it's a birthday gift from my wife she bought me two and a rose on top of that I don't remember and, and, and roses in fact not roses roses Oh, she's sweet. Um, and tell them that all, both of the clothes I bought you, they are your she, favorites now. She's kicking. She's um, abandu. Um, mama wanu. Um, um, wabandu. My only wife. My queen. My pusulu. My sweet banana. My chocolate. My bread and oh butter. So guys, I'm going to go farm. Okay, let me show you. Mm -hmm. I thought that, that thing is moving. It has. <laughs> it has. Yeah, what are those, baby? What? Oh, I don't know. So now, you guys, we are moving and we are, we are just going to Robin Island. As you can see, we are not. We are a lot of people here. Like there's a lot of people here that like, know. So guys, we wanted to see the other two. Robert Island is a sacred place for memory. We are here to honor those who suffered for freedom and justice in our land. What you will experience today is will be truly boat? unforgettable. Today, we are proud to be traveling on the Krotoa. Wow. This boat carries the name of an important woman in the history of our country. As a girl, she was an interpreter between the Dutch and the Khoi. She lived on Robben Island as the post holder's wife, only to return there as the first woman political prisoner. She died on Robben Island in 1674. Please 
Relax and pay attention.
seems like yes. we are here now. You see, and you see, guys, we are so excited, and um, it seems like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything to say. Let's just go. Probably. Okay. This is for such a travel vlog. <laughs> yeah, it's a travel vlog, you see. <laughs> travel vlog. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So good. All right, guys, time to come inside. All right. So guys, we are here and um, we are actually seeing big buildings here and they call it a museum, uh, Robin Island Museum. So we're going to show you everything guys, uh, you know guys, you know, but we are hungry. As you can see guys, we are on the other side but we still love each other, we're not stopping. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh. Oh yes, so we are here guys um, These are the people they need to enter the air Oh, you now got your own camera Fine then, I'm not gonna shoot you Very hmm? Well then, you got your own camera, I'm not gonna shoot you Yes? Fine <laughs> So guys, here is my content, my own content with my own camera I'm not gonna shoot this guy You see this dude guys yeah. I'm not gonna shoot him with my camera. I'm not. And I'm do, not gonna do that. Do you think I not, not, not I with my camera. Care. I don't care. I don't but care. But you look like it. Okay. I don't care. I've but got you my look own like camera. Okay. And you guys, trust me. I'm the only one who's gonna show you everything. Uh, even me. Okay. Well, I have my own computer. Don't worry about it. But we are hungry, guys. We need, we need to look for, for something to eat. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, buses. We need to go to the buses. Yes, that's what they said. Oh. They said go enter bus with buses. So right now we go enter bus, guys. So right now we go to the bus. I'm now a Nigerian. Listen to me. So guys, now we go enter bus. We go enter bus right mm. now. Just now. So guys, we are going to the buses. We don't know what's gonna, what, what are we going to do after that? Maybe they are taking us to Robin Island. Maybe. But we are here. We are here. Island. Yeah, yeah. Already at the island. So we don't know that bus. So this morning when we were uh, checking on Google, we are googling Robin Island. We just <laughs> saw the, the the trees. There was there were no there was no there was no beauty. <laughs> there was no On behalf of Robin Island Museum, I would like to We just see what a map and please proceed to the buses out and before any big So which bus are we going to take now? We don't know. Maybe any. Maybe that one is full, maybe now we just need to take any of us. Which one is full? Maybe that one. And we are hungry like chef. Oh, there is Marco Polo here. Okay. Which one? Bus 4. Oh, right. Bus 4, okay. They said we must take bus 4. And it seems like bus 4 is free. Let's see. You guys see the buses are full now. We are left behind now. Oh yes. Yeah, this one. Which side, baby? This one. At the window. Oh yes. So guys, yeah. Yeah. I see bus here. Which one is Marco Polo bus? This one. That one? Yeah. Wow, it's Marco Polo the time. Yes, it's in front, Marco Polo. Oh, Marco Polo. So guys, the bus is now moving. Uh, it's taking us to where, baby? To the museum, right? The museum, we are going into the museum. You see? Mm. Free zone buses come out of the bus. So my my fellow Zimbabweans, um, I'm corner this 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 land. Um, pagati po gungwa patira, pachitsi, pagati pe mungu rapani kani kaka Right, hello everybody. Hello. 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 <laughs> 
Welcome to Robin Island. Wow. And we're very, very happy here today for two very good reasons. One is the weather is in your favor today. Wow. Of course, yes, for the last four days it was extremely windy on the island. We as a workers, we were hoping the wind is going to last today as well. <laughs> Meaning no boats to Robben Island. <laughs> so be very happy and privileged for the weather. Except my friend right in the back there, the young man over there. When he got into the bus, he asked, I want to get to the bus with the air conditioner. <laughs> my friend, in Africa we don't use air conditioner. When the bus is moving, that's the time when the air condition is going on. Yeah. <laughs> so be very happy and privileged your weather, and also, ladies and gentlemen, be very happy and privileged that you sit so nice and comfortably, one person per seat. I was standing there on the outside, and I could see the worried look and the stampede in everybody's eyes, especially my friend sitting right next to me. Yeah. And his worrisome look question to me was, well, eh? And in Africa, there's always a space and a room for another person of us. <laughs> Buses in our language are never, never full. Any South Africans on the bus here? Yeah, which part are you from? Durban. Now, the lady from the East Coast, Durban. Now, her family runs the taxi industry there. Now, a cab where she comes from, there's a design for 15 people, what we call a 15-seater. If you're a 30th person on the outside, you plead to her, she's going to force you on. This is Africa. Robin Island, a very unique yeah, island. Now, except that the island was a place of banishment for political prisons. But number nine. Many, many other prisons. Many, many other things happened in the island, too. Oh. And on <laughs> our journey yeah, now around the island, other bus? <laughs> before the prison, I'm going to touch on all these little stories. The makeup of Robben Island over hundreds and hundreds of years. And also, my friends, what makes the island so unique? So many nationalities landed on this island over the hundreds and hundreds of years. You name the country in the world, it was either on the island or played a meaningful contribution to our freedom where we are today to tell the story. And just to test my theory here for one minute. I have to wait for the other two bus go a little bit ahead before we can move. And you are from which country? Belgium. My friends, the Belgians too, before the French split you to two, the Dutch and the Belgians were down here. They were from the Netherlands here. Yeah. Oh, there's the Dutchman. You were once, <coughs> what, remember? So you landed on first. But very naughty boys when the Dutch and Belgians came here. When the Dutch and the Belgians landed on this island 300 years ago, they came without a women folk. But nine months later, mm. the first mixed race was born in Africa. Typical the Dutch and the Belgians. Now I've been to the Netherlands myself in the 1960s, 70s. And I can tell you out of all my travels right around the world, the Netherlands is the best. Except for one thing, and that is cheese in the morning. Cheese in the afternoon and cheese in the evening. And that I couldn't take of Dutch diet. But both the Dutch and the Belgians played a meaningful role in our freedom, our touch with that great contribution as we go along. I've been to both countries. My friend from the Netherlands, I was very young that time. But the Dutch ladies didn't make much of me, didn't like me much. But the Belgium ladies were fighting over me. But <laughs> <laughs> they still fighting over the men down there. Belgium. <laughs> and you are from? Brazil. My friend Brazil, you see this bus down here. Marco Polo. When we opened up the island 20 years ago, it was a Brazilian government donated these buses to us. Today I'm in this bus here because a microphone system broke down here. And I was called to this bus. Because a young lady tour guide would not get into a bus without a microphone. Made in Brazil. <laughs> what better? Now, my friend from Brazil, what will you do if I tell you that I've met your president personally, the Silva, Lula. Lula. Lula, I met him personally. He was the man who started. I take, get to that story. 
is there no other countries? And the reason why I'm asking which country of my mind, vote your country into our story. Because 300 years ago, the Indians too landed in this island as political prisoners. At the end of the program, I'll get to that story, how the Indians landed there. The old African slogan. In Africa, we say, why is it that the Indian can never win a soccer match? You know what? Whenever they get a corner, they want to open up a shop down there. We know these buggers are straightsmen in Africa. Nothing. There's one button, we do the other My friend from uh, uh, England, the English rule for 100 years. That is why we speak the two European languages. That is Dutch, but more Flemish. And we speak the English language. And maybe my English is not as good as that of the butler of Buckingham Palace. But you'll understand my English, okay? No English through my nose. <laughs> my friends, I have to move from here. Just one. And the reason why I'm asking which country you're from, I want to build your country into Zimbabwe. the Zimbabwe. Where from Zimbabwe? If you're going to tell me you're a great granddaughter from <laughs> Robert Zimbabwe, then I've got another story for you. <laughs> my friends, our escape route out of South Africa from the police was to get into old Rhodesia, remember? Yeah. And today it's called Zimbabwe. <laughs> Over the Victorian waterfalls into Zambia and Uganda and then to the rest of the world. It was the Zimbabweans who always supplied us with false passports to get along. <laughs> you still give me false passports out there? <laughs> <laughs> The very first, there's no other countries, and don't be shy. Australia? My friend from Australia, if I were you, I would have kept quiet. <laughs> we are no no. The Australians left the table. Post, post, post. <laughs> you guys. Up till today, we suffer the consequences of the Australian effect upon us. When I get to the Australian story later, I'm not going to ask you to close your ears. I'm going to ask you to get off the bus. I guarantee you won't be able to survive that one. But when you come to our freedom, oh, the Australians played a very big role in our freedom. The very, there's no other countries. The yeah. very, yes, at the back. Germany. My friends, the Second World War, Robin Island turned into a <laughs> military base. <laughs> All the prisoners were sent off the island. The army, the navy stepped on. And the Africans built five huge cattle cannons. Triple the size of this bus. It's still standing in the center of the island to protect the Cape Town Harbour from any possible German or Japanese invasion. But the joke around the five cannons is, we all know the war ended 1945. The Africans only finished the building of those guns, 1947. <laughs> <laughs> Never fired one single shot from the island. The Africans are always late, you know. <laughs> My friend from Germany, I've been to East Germany, Leipzig. In those days with the war, and it was the Germans who gave us military training. And it was the Germans who tried to get the German language under my tongue. But what I couldn't understand of the German language, das, der, dem. I could never, <laughs> I could never get on with that language there. The very first political prisoner to Robben Island, 1653. The very last to have left this island a free man, 1990. So you can imagine what happened in between these two dates. But at the end of the day, once again, we have come back to the rest of the world and say thank you to you. During the days of our struggle for freedom, it was your countrymen who came back, supported us in the struggle, brought us where we are today, at least to tell the story. On your right hand side, that's maximum prison, home for Mr. Mandela and thousands of others. On our last journey, we're going to stop, go inside, and see what it looked like. I've got a man from France here. Now, the French too were down here. 200 years ago, there was a fight in France, the Protestants and the Catholics. The French fled to South Africa. But the French did not come empty handed. The French came with a great mind. It was the French who taught us the art of drink. Now we can't stop drinking. This <laughs> 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 we go back to the mainland. 
How should two operators will take you a town from Stalin to Pushkin? But one hour's drive from Big Town. Big French car. Just a bit of. On your right hand side, you see the graveyard of right. the cemetery. Oh. 200 years ago. Robben Island was the isolation camp. Remember those days, it was a worldwide phenomenon. If you have the sickness of leprosy, they isolate you. What you look at, you look at 1,500 graves scattered among these bushes. Here you talk about white people, black people, the Indian community, the mixed race, everybody to the island. But what you have to understand, 200 years ago there was a great confusion around the sickness. They were on the impression, if you have the sickness leprosy, you touch another person, that person too shall be affected. But they were totally wrong. In short, so many landed on the island who never had leprosy at all. And once they sent you to the island, it's that sentence, you must come and die here, never to see the mainland again. And I can tell you that these lepers were treated worse than criminals on the Roman island. But before leprosy, for the sake of my South African friend, 300 years ago, that was a Dutch room, 300 years ago, it was smallpox, pocket, that hit South Africa. Millions died. 300 years ago, smallpox. 200 years ago, leprosy. And up till today, we still struggle to find a cure for the AIDS pandemic. Now, the pandemic AIDS is already rife in our societies. And we all know the story. Not too long ago, the entire world survived the COVID pandemic. But once again, 1831, up to 1941, almost 100 years, Robben Island, isolation camp, the sickness called leprosy. So guys, Botrat, okay, Botrat up and I'll talk here. Oh, okay. Can you like this one? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we got the lady from Switzerland. Guys, the manager of Switzerland. How are we going to go back? Oh, you see, the I got another oh, story. Now but the source played a big role. Oh, you can't see it all. You can't. Guys. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember I pointed out to you maximum prison on the other side where Mr. Mandela and thousands were kept. We are still going there. Get off the bus and go inside and see what it looked like. But South Africans, on your right hand side is another prison. Okay. The smallest prison in the entire world. Only one man was kept in that prison. The man who started the uprise, the revolution in this country, 1960. The man the old government feared very much, if not the most. South Africans, his name. South Africans, you're not going to embarrass me in front of my friends again. <laughs> Robert Sibukwe. Robert Sibukwe was not kept with all the other prisoners. He was kept so alone in this little house with a red rooftop. The cages next to the house, those were dark kennels. But the dark kennels were built after his time. It was only that single house on the entire plot of land. Where the bus is standing now was a huge watchtower. Front lights at night to watch over him that he must not escape. Now, ladies and gentlemen, seeing that most of you are not from South Africa, the hot favorite questions our visitors from all over the world always ask us on this island. What was the fight all about? Why was it so necessary to get rid of the old government? And I can give you a thousand and ten reasons. But today, 
I'm going to set on one. The most horrible law of the past. In those days, if you're a black person in this country, male or female, you had to carry a little booklet in your pocket 24 hours a day. Yes. And should the police catch you without that booklet outside your house? Three to six months in prison. And written in that booklet out of many, many laws and rules. I'm going to touch on one. <coughs> your area of movement. A black person, male or female, in the country of birth, <coughs> they were not allowed to move freely from city to city, town to town, unless government grants permission in that booklet. <coughs> Neither were they not allowed to work or to school wherever they wanted to. They say a man would run into a burning house, <coughs> not to save his children, to save the booklet. Because without that booklet outside his house, he means nothing. He can't even walk to his workplace. And to get hold of another uh, copy of that booklet is one big mammoth task. And to my lady friends, imagine you're a mother. <coughs> you left home with your baby, and by accident you have forgotten your booklet at home. Here in the middle of nowhere, the police arrest you without a booklet. You know what the police would do with you? Put you in the police van, and through the window of the police van, you'll see your little baby in the hands of a stranger. Sisters, I guarantee you, you shall die at that spot. Many such children got lost in the, pro <coughs> in the process. So on the 21st of March, 1960, which is today a sacred day in our calendar, public holiday, human rights day. Even the United Nations accepted it as an international human rights day, 21st of March, 1960. On that day, the 21st of March, 1960, this man, Sibukwe, he was a professor at Pitts University. He gave up his job to join the struggle. And on that day, the 21st of March, 1960, he instructed all the black people countrywide to march to all police stations without the booklet and to hand themselves over to the police to be arrested. They followed his call by the thousands countrywide. They brought the entire country to a standstill then. Unfortunately, on that day, the 21st of March, 1960, in front of one police station, in the town called Shabo. After the police arrested the first hundred men, he looked through the window of the police station. There were thousands outside waiting to be arrested without the booklet. Instead, the police came out with the machine guns. And within five minutes, they gunned down 69 in front of that police station. The start of the revolution. Countrywide that day, there were killings. Countrywide that day, arrests were made by the thousands. The country was in chaos. The army had to just the same. The army had to step in. And it was on that day when government realized that people are now prepared to die for their freedom. When government realized that determination of the people, they quickly reopened Robben Island for political prisoners after the Second World War. And they immediately built the prison on that side, 1960. They arrested the Professor too. They first gave him a three-year sentence, which he first served on the mainland. That's Johannesburg. But when his three years were over 1963, the situation in this country was so explosive they could not afford the professor his freedom. They brought him to Rome. And because he already served his sentence on the mainland, they couldn't mix him with the others. They put him in that little house, soul alone. He was not allowed to talk to anybody, not even to the four guards around his house. They say the third year, when the professor was eventually visited in there, his vocal cords, stem under, affected by not talking. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why is 21st of March so sacred in our calendar? Public holiday, Human Rights Day. It was on that day, too, when the eyes of the world for the first time opened upon South Africa. The first three countries to step in support. It was first India, 
who took the South African case to the United Nations, exposed the atrocities to the rest of the world. Then the Germans, the Dutch, and the Belgians started to boycott South African fruit. Sanctions were applied against the country. The entire world refused to trade with South Africa. And then the English stepped in. The other part of the fight against the old government, in those days you could have been the best of athletes, the best of sportsmen. If you are not white, you cannot make the national team of the country. Immediately after the Sabukwe uprise, when these all white rugby springbok teams would go to Twickenham in England, Brisbane, Australia, it was your communities that would invade the pitches, disrupt the all, all white South African rugby games the start of the Olympic boycott against South Africa. South Africa was kicked out of the Olympic Games. And then my friend from Brazil, under the leadership of Brazil in the Southern American states, with my friend from uh, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, the help of the African bloc and the Indian bloc, they threatened Montreal Olympics in Canada that if you allow the all white teams in Canada, Africa, India, and the Southern American states under Brazil is gonna walk out of the Olympics. The Canadian government had no choice but to refuse the all white teams down there. The old African slogan is the last straw that breaks the camel's back. They had to release the, the, the professor from the island, 1969. After six years alone in there, never gave him his freedom. Banish him to a small town, central South Africa, called Kimberley. He was not allowed to leave the boundaries of the town. He died in 1978, age 54. Some books claim they poisoned the professor of the island. Other books claim he died of cancer. The forgotten hero, the pace setter, Robert Sibukwe. Endless, I can talk about him. So guys, they are showing us everywhere and telling us the history, so just listen, listen and listen carefully, seeing everything and South Africans, are you here? Africans, are you here? Uh, we know a lot of South Africans want to know about all this, want to know about uh, Robben Island. So of course this man here in the past is telling us everything. He is just telling us everything. All the history. So guys, you have to buckle up and listen carefully. Oh wow, what's that? Ooh. Wow. <coughs> Maybe it's gonna tell us about Alright, ladies and gentlemen, on your left hand side. The limestone quarry, Kalkamay. This is in this quarry where Mr. Mandela and all the leaders were. And the leadership were never more than 30 at a time. Mr. Mandela worked in this quarry 13 years out of his 18 years stay on the island. Now what was very bad working this quarry? was not the hard labor per se. What was very bad working this quarry was a reflection of the brightness of the white lime upon their eyes. And they were not allowed dark glasses except the last two years. And I guarantee you, my friend, should I allow you outside this bus for five minutes on end in this quarry without your dark glasses, you shall never be able to stare at the brightness of that line without squinting your eyes. Many of them turned snow blind, half blind. And whenever it's windy on the island, then the chemical lime dust happen to settle on the skins, affect the eyesight, inhale it extremely irritable. In the case of Mr. Mandela, the gland that supplied the tear to his eye dried up in the process. But what was most frustrating working down here? Not hard labor. Now what you look at, you look at the 300 year old limestone quarry. And in those very olden days, they used the lime 
for painting purposes and building material. But during the time of Mr. Mandel, there was no need, no demand for the limestone. So one day they will scoop up the limestone from one angle, dump it on the other end. The next day, just pick it up, take it no. back home again. It was more a form of punishment and to keep them busy. But ladies and gentlemen, it is in this way where they help one another to further their education. Remember one of the many other fights against the old government. Education those days for a black man in this country was almost zero. So many came down here that could not even read or write. And in the early days, no books, no paper allow for the political prisoners. So if you come to the island, you cannot read or write. While working, make sure you stand next to a teacher. Now at school teachers, yes, political prisoners. In order to read and to write. But thanks, my friend, to Switzerland. It was International Red Cross Switzerland who took the South African case to the United Nations challenged the old government that education for any prisoner anywhere else in the world is a right and not a privilege. The old government had no choice. 1970 to allow education on the island. So after 1970, prisoners could further their education via correspondence schools, University of South Africa, and in particular University College London correspondence. Thanks to the Swiss involvement. So many left the island with two or three <coughs> university degrees. The youngest political president of the island, 14 years old, sister. You know what a 14-year-old boy looked like? He was given a 15-year sentence. When he left the island, once again, thanks to the Swiss friend from Switzerland, he left the island with two or three university degrees. He became an advocate outside. In 1994, he became the National Chief Justice of South Africa. All started right down in the squad here. And my friends, while the young white guards were standing on the hillside down there with the guns in their hands, looking down upon the fellows at the bottom not to escape, they soon realized that these fellows at the bottom are furthering their education. And in those days, you become a guard, you did not need much of an education. So the guards too came down. And Mr. Mandela had this approach. Mr. Mandela would tell his fellow inmates, let us not fight these young white guards, because they too are all victims of a vicious society. And Mr. Mandela would rather say, let's rather bring the guards down, bring them closer to our chest. And it worked. And with the help of the political prison, the guards too, when they left the island, would leave the island with two or three university degrees. And this is what we claim today, the starting point of reconciliation in this country. Forgiveness. Everybody expected a bloodbath in South Africa. It never occurred. We went into a peaceful transition from the old government into the new government. Where did it all start? In the quarry down here. You know, my friends, 20 years ago, and remember, I've retired from this work here. Yeah. I was just called to come and help out here. Yeah. 20 years ago, I, saw I was so fortunate to be in a company with uh, one of the great American professors, Professor Cornell like West. An impala, what I don't know. And he it's said to me that uh, that evening, 20 years ago, that I am the keynote speaker to Mandela's birthday. And tonight I'm going to ask him, look him straight in the eyes, the word forgiveness, reconciliation, where does it derive in the line of ancestry of forefathers? You know what Mandela, and he said it to Mandela, what Mandela said, no, the word reconciliation, forgiveness, is not my word. I borrow that word from another great civil rights leader from America, none other than, you say, Martin Luther King. But if you in turn studied the doctrines and the philosophy of Martin Luther King again, you would say, no, that is not his word either. He borrowed that word from another great politician that was arrested in South Africa. Maybe not in prison on the island, but in prison on the mainland. Another guess? 
Oh, my friend from India, I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> Thank you very much, my friend from uh, Belgium. None other than Mahatma Gandhi. The first Indian who never heard about Mahatma Gandhi. Can you believe <laughs> <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi. Today, my friends, you can easily claim this. This country, South Africa, today is floating. On the philosophy of the three M's, the philosophy of that of Mahatma Gandhi. Martin Luther King Mandela. This is where this country is heading now. Feel very honored you are actually standing now on the campus of a university. <laughs> the driver taking us around the island. His father worked in this quarry shoulder to shoulder with Mandela for 20 years. Remember, Mandela worked 13 years. His father worked longer than Mandela, I think, 20 years. Today, when we open up the island, he was two years old when his father was arrested. His father was released when he was 22 years old. Today, when you open up the alley, make sure to bring ex-political prisoners. One will take you to the prison, eh? Political activists. If not, we give job opportunities for the children of the political prisoners. His father was a political prisoner, eh? So we say thank you to Pumzele eh? for his family's contribution, sacrificing life. Mr. Mandela worked here 13 years as a bus driver. Be cruising nicely. You are to get a good note of not over some more to cut a beaker. Who needs a <coughs> Guys, there's a little firewood here. If we stay here, we don't need electricity, or we just use this firewood. So it seems like the houses here, it seems like the people who stay here. I think those who work here, they stay here. The people who stay here, oh, the playgrounds. Oh, I think a lot of people stay here. And there's nice houses here. Mm -hmm. And there's workers, a lot of workers. When you're right inside, another church building. 1841 Garrison Church. Now remember, I pointed out the church for the lepers and those who look after the lepers. This was the church. Now, if you go into this church, written against the wall inside, big and box, the name May Harvey. Now, May Harvey was a very, very young English Catholic nun who came all the way, 1846, from London to a remote island, Robert Island, to come and look after our lepers. What we call today the Mother Teresa of Roman Island. Unfortunately, at the very young age of 36, this young English Catholic nun sacrificed her life, dived into the water to save a drowning leper. But she and the leper got entangled by the seaweed. Both of them drowned. Ever since, we remember the great contribution of this young English Catholic nun who gave her life for the lepers of Rome. An endless history around the nun and the church of Europe. Down the road, you see that old dilapidated building. Now that was in the side. I got you. In the side of those people in South Africa who were not so mentally called the lunatics in the central of But I always say to our listeners, should we apply the same norm today? What they applied then, 200 years ago, who is mad and not mad? Half the world, if not three quarters of the world, would have been on this island. So strict were in those days. So in short, my friends, for 100 years, Robin Island was a mental hospital. 
And in that building underground is dark rooms. And it was a non-medical staff who look after the mental patients. And in those days, 200 years ago, we didn't know much about mental sicknesses. Lock up in the dark rooms. So these mental patients, they too were treated worse than criminals on Roman Island. Thanks. These were the houses of the gods and their families. The political prisoners never saw this part of the island. Today, those who work on the island, a hundred of them occupy some of these houses. But most of the houses are empty. The best view in the world is Table Mountain from Robben Island. So that is uh, still on. Take your shots, my friend. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are running a little bit uh, out of time, but we have to get up here five minutes, five minutes only to get off the bus. And if they say five minutes, I'm, uh, my Indian friends, I mean five minutes. You know, the Indians are always late. <laughs> So we got out of the bus to take pictures, videos, and to buy food. Oh my gosh, this was the best experience ever. So guys, uh, that man, that white man said uh, the best view from this side is uh, Table Mountain. Oh yes. So let's, uh, let's take pictures just for five minutes and buy food. So guys, we are out here at the Robert Island, uh, Paduze Nembora, just uh, near water, near the water. water. So we're just looking for somewhere to take pictures. It's so we managed to take few pictures because time was not on our side. Oh my gosh, we can't wait to see where Nelson Mandela was locked up. <laughs> Let's go together, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, these people, they were the last group of political prisoners to be released from Robben Island prison. These people were released on the 27th of April 1991. So that means after the 27th of April 1991, there were no political prisoners on the island. Then we are going that way, please. You know what? Mm -hmm. I don't like jokes. I'm serious. I don't even laugh. But you were asking for pictures with that guy who was saying you like him because he makes jokes. You... But now you, 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 you are changing now. Okay, it's fine. It's, fine. it's okay, fine. Guys, the problems. I love jokes. Everything is funny to me, but Just when me. I'm hungry, okay. From Monday to Friday, we were woken up at 5 in the morning. The doors were open at 7. When they opened the doors at 7, then we'll have breakfast. After we have breakfast, we go out to work. For prisoners that couldn't go out to work, maybe they were sick or for some other reasons they couldn't go out to work, those prisoners will be locked inside the cells. They will be given 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon exercise time. And then before four, we come back from work, we'll have supper, and then four o'clock, we're locked up for the day. We didn't work on weekends. On weekends, the doors were open at eight, and we're locked up at three. However, on Saturdays, we're allowed to play sports. So that's why we played our sport, and we played mostly rugby. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet in a cell. Are you still there? We are getting inside. Inside, guys. But I want to ask you something. This man is saying we. Is he one of them? It means so. Welcome to Robin Island Maximum Security Prison. My name is Jama, J A M A, for the prison and Robin Island Prison. 
from 1977 to 1982. So in other words, I served five years as a retired prisoner. Where we are now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a cell. There are two types of cells. There are single cells and there are group cells. A single cell is a small one for one person. You will see how a single cell looks like when you go to the Kemandela cell. In a group cell, there were 30 people, 3 zero, when you see people in this mess. When I came in 1977, there were no beds in prison. So each bed was given two beds like those and three blankets. And then in 1979, through the intervention of the International Committee of the Red Cross, then we were given beds like that bed. When we were sitting in beds, then there were 40 to 50 people in a group cell. So when there were 40 people, that means there were 20 of those banner beds, and when there were 50, there were 25 of those banner beds. And then of course, we are allowed to play with our religions. On a Sunday, even when you have a church service, we had a service in a cell. And then this other one, this is a diet scale. This is how diet of meals used to be here. Yeah, there used to be a diet for Canadian Indians. There used to be a diet for blacks. This word bandu is the word that was used by white people when they referred to blacks. And the reason for different diets for meals, it was because of the apartheid system that the South African government had at that time. So that's why they had different diets. But there was no section or a cell for Canadian Indians only. We were all doing the same cells. We went up to work together, we did the page together. And it was because of the apartheid system that white political prisoners did not serve their sentences here. Because we also had white political prisoners. But they served their sentences at Victoria Central Prison. We also had female political prisoners. They also did not serve their sentences here. Female political prisoners served their sentences at Kronstadt Prison. There's a town called Kronstadt, so that's where female prison was. Here in Northern Island Prison, only black, colored, and Indian male political prisoners. And for people who worked here, only white Africans speaking males. And then Mili Mil, that's porridge. Colored and Indians only had porridge for breakfast. Blacks had porridge for breakfast and for supper. We had three meals a day. We had breakfast at seven, we had lunch at eleven, we had supper at four, and then four o'clock by locked up for the day. So, ladies and gentlemen, if one can take a closer look at this diet scale, then one will have an idea what type of food we had. Okay. And then, Puz Amanda. Puz Amanda is powdered form. You mix it with water and then you drink it. Any question? And then. Why were you sent here? What was, why were you sent here? I'll tell you later. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after they released political prisoners, they brought in common law prisoners or criminals. And then in 1995, we had a reunion of the political prisoners. And it was then that we took a decision that Robert Island must be closed down as a prison because we wanted it to be declared a museum. And that is why in 1996, all the prisoners that were here were taken to other prisons on mainland, so that means Robert Island was closed down as a prison in 1996. And then in 1997, it was open for tourists. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take you to Mr. Mandela's cell. But before we go to Mr. Mandela's cell, have you ever heard about the 1976 school uprisings? A few yeses. Okay. To answer the latest question then, during the apartheid era, there were three departments of education. There was a department for whites, there was a department for colored and Indians, there was a department for blacks. The one for blacks was the most inferior of the three. Before 1976, at our schools we were taught in English. But in 1976, the government decided that 
we must use Afrikaans as a medium of instruction in at our schools. <laughs> Afrikaans is a language that is spoken by white South Africans. So that is why we protested against the use of Afrikaans at our schools. It started in Soweto on the 16th of June 1976. That is why other people know it in 1976 auto school uprisings, because it started in Soweto. I'm not from Soweto, I'm from Port Elizabeth. In 1976, I was still at school. I was in high school. I was one of the students that organized and led the protest that happened in Port Elizabeth. So that's why I was arrested in Port Elizabeth. So in other words, I was arrested in 1976, but I was convicted in 1977. So that's why I was brought in 1977. So ladies and gentlemen, as we go out, I will give you a few minutes to take pictures, okay? So as we go out, you can take pictures. I'll be waiting in front of the section, okay? Let's go then. Okay, so it was F section, the next one was G section, then the other one was D, and then the other one was the E. So those are the four group cell sections. And as I said earlier, that the prison is divided into sections. That is how we stayed. We stayed in sections, we were not allowed to interact. However, people in a section could interact. So people in a section will form clubs or teams and play among themselves as people in a section, not with people from other so guys uh we are done we are going back now thank you guys for watching our videos please uh do share do comment uh, we love you we know you love us so we love you too guys uh, we are going back now uh, from robin island to water front anyway in case we are just going back home so guys we love you like we we really really love you we appreciate your love and your support we just love you are we supposed to, step, to, to sit to exactly where we are sitting? Oh, yeah, so let's, let's go up. So guys, we are going up. Me and my bear are going up. It's because I'm not going to fall already. Seems like it's full already. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 And um, we're so excited. We had a great day, good day. Uh, you know, we, sunset, Baba. I think we are cool. Then we are going that way, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this was the D section, one of the group cell sections. This was the D section. D section was also known as the Namibian section because people from Namibia were kept in this section. Before its independence, Namibia was known as Southwest Africa. During that time, it was under the administration of the South African government. 
So that is why the people that were fighting for the liberation of Namibia, when they were convicted, they were brought on the island to serve their sentences. So they were separated from the South Africans. It was only their leader, Toivo Ya Toivo, who was put together with other leaders in B section, but the rest of them were kept in this section. Maybe I'm going that way, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the hospital section. Every morning, there was a nurse who came to the section. So if one was not feeling well, he'll go to the nurse. If one had to see a doctor, the doctor came once a week. And if one was very sick then, he'll be admitted to the hospital. And then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, there are political prisoners who died on the island. All the political prisoners who died on the island were never taken to their families, not their families notified. So they were buried somewhere in Cape Town as paupers. Okay. Then this way, please. B section. Before you go to Mr. Mandela's cell, this area, this was their exercise yard. When they were given 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon exercise time, they would just walk around here. And here, because they didn't have enough space like in a group cell section, so on Saturdays they played mostly tennis. So, and then that part along the wall, that used to be Mr. Mandela's garden. Mr. Manila started writing his book, Long Walk to Freedom, while he was in prison. But because the authorities would come at any time of the day and night to come and search the cells, so Mr. Manila didn't want to take the risk of keeping the manuscripts in his cell, so he had to hide them in the garden. And one of the prisoners was in this section by the name of Mek Maharaj. When he was released, he managed to smuggle out of prison some parts of the manuscripts. And then Mr. Mandela's cell will be the fourth window. So when you go inside the section, it will be the fourth cell on our right. The condition in Mr. Mandela's cell, because there's no bed, that is the condition before we were given beds. When we were given beds in 1979, everyone was given a bed. One will also notice there's a bucket in Mr. Mandela's cell. As you will see, they didn't have toilets in the cells. So here in the single cells, each prisoner was given a bucket to use as a toilet at night. And when the doors are open the following morning, each prisoner will carry his own packet and go and clean it in their bathroom. Of the 27 years that Mr. Mandela spent in prison, 18 of those years he spent in that cell, from 1964 to 1982. In 1982, Mr. Mandela was transferred to Portsmo Prison. And after spending some years in Portsmo Prison, in 1988, he was transferred from Portsmo Prison to Victor Fester Prison, from where he was released in 1990. Portsmo Prison is in Cape Town, Victor Fester prison is in Pearl. Pearl is a town about 50 to 60 kilometers from Cape Town if one goes through N1. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you understand that. Mr. Mandela didn't spend all 27 years, he spent 18. When he was released in 1990, he was not released from Robben Island, but from Victor Fester prison. And when we go inside the section, outside each cell, one will notice a red light and a button. They also had intercom systems in the cells. If one was not feeling well at night, he'll communicate with the people at the reception. And the people at the reception, because they were not the ones who were going to come and attend to the sick person, they're going to send someone else. So they will put on the red light so that the person who's coming will know in which cell was the sick person. And then the button was to switch off the light. And after you've seen Mr. Mandela say, ladies and gentlemen, that will be the end of the tour. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for visiting Robin Allen Museum and I'd like to wish you a safe journey back home. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank and the size of the cell is 2 meters by 3 meters. You can take pictures then. And then we go out that way. Oh, that is the packet. Oh my god.
There's also a plate in the cup. Oh my god. This is the end of the tour. Oh wow, what a day. Thank you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Guys, which country or which place do you want to visit next? Tell us in the comment section.